Hey guys, how are you? So, how important is the actual code in the coding process? This is probably going to freak out a bunch of you young nerd nooblings out there. What you will discover as a professional developer that the code that you actually write is almost the last stage of the process. Really, the complexity in writing software is all kinds of other things around the code, setting up environments, setting up server environments, deployment uh, and um, development environments, looking at uh, architectures, making technology choices based on the needs of the particular job at hand or the work at hand, understanding the big picture, the architecture. So for example, if you're doing the web stack, understanding client-server relationships, client-side programming versus server-side programming, when it makes sense to, to write uh, code or to uh, write logic on the server versus on the client, how those uh, two aspects of a particular piece of web software interact with each other, what the implications of all that is. Later on, if your app becomes uh, more popular, how about performance issues, how does this architecture, how does the style coding impact the different types of architectures that you can implement in terms of performance? This video is sponsored by Serve. Serve is a content delivery network for images. It basically allows you to super quickly load images in your websites. They have an array of servers all over the world. So the way it works, you upload your images to their servers and then you just link to those uploaded images and you're going to see how much more quickly the images will load in your sites. But it does a lot more than that. When you upload an image to serve, they will create different versions of that image which are optimized for different settings. So you can just use a URL to change the settings and load different images. So this is all done by serve tools and it's pretty cool stuff. So it could take away the need in many respects of having to create different images for yourself that are commonly used. So I can imagine in an e-commerce situation uh, where you're selling artwork or products, you just upload your products shots to serve and they take care of everything else for you. Serve is used by huge brands like uh, Hudson Bayco, USDA, Timberland, D-Link. So let me read some of the major benefits. Faster image loading, on-the-fly image optimizations, resizing and format conversion. We call it the optimal format. All images are served from our own CDN. So they have servers all over the world, as I mentioned. Super fast loading. I was pretty impressed with that. URL API. Resize, crop, add watermarks, text, tweak hue, saturation, much more, 90 plus options, just by changing the image URL. Your master image is left untouched. Transformations are unlimited. So basically, you upload your master image to serve, and serve will make all these different variations, and you can link to them just by cut, cutting and pasting a URL. Digital asset management, sleek and fast UI for managing assets, the assets being your images, user access control, folder sharing, tagging, 360 spins, our first class citizens on our platform. Check it out. So I'll show you one of our 360 spins. Here's the shoe. And look how quickly that works. Boom, boom, boom. Pretty cool. They provide that functionality for you so you don't have to do it yourself. It's almost instant. So very good tool. I highly recommend Check out Serve. As you know, I don't recommend products or services unless I approve of them myself. So take it, check out Serve. Link below. Oftentimes, you see a lot of the bugs in your code, a lot of the inefficiencies in your code. It's not actually in the complexity of the code itself, but it's the complexity of the environment around the code. That's why when I teach in my courses, I teach that big picture, that environment. If you're doing a code course, and they're just concentrated on the actual code, the syntax that you write. That's only part of the uh, equation. There's much more involved. That's, that's what people find out when they actually get into the game. So for example, I was uh, supporting somebody in my mentoring community and they were working on a project and it was a simple PHP CRUD project using a prepared statement. And it would work fine. The code would work fine on their local machine. 
but when they would upload it to the server, and this is simple stuff, it's nothing very complex, it wouldn't work. And they could, why does it work? What's going on? Anyhow, long story short, it could have been many different things, but at the end of the day, it was just a, a permissions issue on the server. That's it. That's all. So it has nothing to do with code, right? Whether the app was working or not working depended on configuration. And so that's why I say for a lot of people out there, it's good to partner with a fully supported virtual private server or fully supported traditional hosting uh, service so that they can deal with those environmental configuration issues that you may run across. So when you're choosing a hosting company, as an example, it's very important that you make sure that they actually have a tech support line that is reachable. So before I would pay for hosting, I would just go to a hosting company, whatever one you want, and in full, and, and in full disclosure, I partner with different hosting companies, check to see if their tech support actually responds to you in a timely manner. That's a huge value in the hosting. Everybody, get caught, everybody gets caught up in scaling and uh, various esoteric feature sets that most web apps don't need. What they should be concerned, what you should be concerned about, is the support, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Anyway, went off on a tangent. So the whole point of this video is to help people who are getting into the game as a software developer. And I just use the web stack as an example, but it applies to anything. The environment and understanding the key, uh, the big picture, if you will, and the key technologies and the infrastructure and which in which your code will reside is uh, many ways more important than the actual code that you write. Most of your time as a developer will be spent uh, just basically stitching together the various components of your application. The code is the, is the thread. The code allows you to stitch everything together. And the bugs will be just in typical, well, the most common bugs are um, typo bugs omitting a semicolon, or in the case of Python, forgetting to indent when you should indent, which will mess up your code. So but those type of clerical errors are the most common bugs in my experience. That's why code completion, the cut and paste, and now these new crop of AI-based code assistants are great because they will uh, eliminate, or excuse me, reduce quite a bit uh, typo bugs, which is great. Next level of bug, of course, is uh, logical bugs, right? Logical bugs where in, but those are the rarest in my opinion, in my experience. The, you know, this logically, you didn't, you know, you didn't write that algorithm correctly, so it's not coming out with the result that you want. But that's another, you know, reasonably common bug, but that's the least of the, of the top three. Number one is typo. Number three is the logical bugs. And uh, number two, I should I should mention number two twice the second time is the actually infrastructure bugs, uh, server config uh, not configured not configured properly, a permission not set properly, a port not open, uh, a server not running properly, those type of things. So to summarize, a big part of complexity in coding has little to do with the actual code, it has to do with these other elements within your stack. I'm not saying that coding is not important. Of course, it's super important. Good coding practices and so forth, which I talked about in other videos, important. But really, it's all these other things around it that make a huge difference in terms of how much time you're gonna spend writing code and building an app and how much, uh, how performant, how reliable your app is, has a lot to do with these other elements as well. So, I'll leave you with this. Advanced developers, Pro developers strive to simplify and to uh, streamline their code base. Noobs and intermediate level developers uh, get off on writing very, very complex code, very stringy code. Complex code equals noob, simple code equals pro.